All right, now that we have an idea about what we want to do in channel estimation, let's start with our first technique. Again, I'm going to just focus here on OFDM, and we're going to show you how to implement a very simple channel estimator by a technique from machine learning called kernel regression. And this will actually get you pretty good performance and it's also easy to understand and analyze. So let's uh, start with that. So this is our problem. We have um, a call that the OFDM channel can be represented as an array, H, which varies in frequency, which I'm denoting by n, and in time, which I'm denoting by k. So we're varying over the subcarriers and the symbol numbers. So just shown in this plot to the right is an example of an OFDM uh, channel over about a 10 megahertz bandwidth um, with uh, kind of a small amount of Doppler, so it doesn't change much in time, but you definitely see that variation in frequency in this uh, case here. Now, the problem is that we want to estimate this channel somehow, and we need, of course, to estimate that channel if we want to demodulate these symbols x and, and k. So as I mentioned in the previous uh, unit, what we need to do for that is to have something called reference signals. So this is the idea. So this is our channel, and this is the received array and the transmitted array and our channel array, and we want to estimate this, which is highlighted in purple. So what we do is we add what are called reference signals. So in the 5G new radio standard, and it applies basically to all, in various forms, to all of the systems, it's just this, we reserve some small number of the symbols, ref resource elements in each uh, slot, for reference. So they're um, shown, they have the name Demodulation Reference Signals, another crazy acronym, DMRS, and we show, see them here in this, I guess that's a yellow uh, color here, um, and so these yellow squares are the reference signals. So in this case, there are quite a few of them. There are 24 of these resource elements in this um, uh, block, right, which are reserved. So what you can do, hopefully, is that on each one of these resource elements uh, that are reference signals, you know x of n and k. So since you know x and you also get this r, you can estimate the channel on these and then try to interpolate to get the channel and all the other um, resource elements. And once you have that, you can go ahead and demodulate the data that's transmitted um, in them. Okay, so uh, there are many ways like everything in the new radio standard to configure the uh, these DMRS so you can change for example the density in frequency you can change the density in time I've just shown here um, one such configuration and if you check out the demo and remember all the material for the MATLAB code in this is given in the github site with the links below um, you can uh, look up one of these configurations. So in this one, unlike the one in the previous uh, slide, I only have it on one time symbol, but I also apply it on uh, six OFDM symbols at a uh, six uh, subcarriers out of twelve at that one time. Now there's some other uh, sub there's some other reference signals here. There's also I showed what's called this phase tracking reference signal. That's also used um, can be used for channel estimation, but it's more specifically for tracking the phase um, variation over time, and that becomes important for tracking out phase noise, which is super important for millimeter wave systems. I'm not actually going to talk about it much in this. Uh, unit, but uh, hopefully maybe I'll get a chance to talk about it in some later units when we talk about some of the impairments in millimeter wave devices. And then the rest here is all this yellow and that would be your data. All right, so you can work out what the overhead would be um, for this uh, resource elements. All right, I uh, just want to point out there's this really uh, excellent uh, tutorial on the MATLAB website, which gives you shows you all about how to do the configurations and, uh, and using the 5G toolbox. And we're going to use some of that in the demos and in the lab uh, in this unit. All right, uh, talking about that, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the 5G uh, uh, toolbox. So you can actually generate configurations for the DMRS really easily. So they have a data structure called this new radio PDSCH DMRS. So the, the DMRS is always sent along with PDSCH, which is, remember, the data channel. And it has various parameters in, in this, like uh, whether you want to have unused DMRS, how many uh, symbols in time, how many uh, uh, subcarriers of frequency, and so on. So you can play around with this. I've also just put in these phase tracking reference symbols, and you can get, once you configure them, you can get the symbols and indices. So again, check it out. It's all in the um, 
all of the demos and you can see how that uh, works but it's, they make it super easy to configure with the 5g toolbox all right now that we have figured out how to place these reference symbols let's talk about channel estimation from these reference symbols so um, as i showed you in the previous slide i've just configured in this case to have the reference symbols only on one time they can be on multiple times OVDM symbols in the slot but in this case i just put them on one uh, time and they're indicated in these blue uh, resource elements here. So let's take a look at the channel at that one OFDM symbol. So that's highlighted here in red. And if I plot it, I would look at the channel and that's that blue line, which varies in frequency because there's frequency selective fading. In this case, it's about uh, 20, 200 nanoseconds of delay spread. So about a coherence bandwidth of maybe about two and a half megahertz. All right, so it's varying in time. And each of these red circles are the channel estimate you can get from the DMRS at that position. I'm going to show you how to get that in the next slide. So let's look at that. So remember, this, we zoomed into one OFDM symbol. And so what I have on that one OFDM symbol, I have something that's just varying over frequency. So I'm going to call that R of N is what I receive. And this is the channel, which is what I want to know, learn. And I have this X of N, which is known at least on the DMR RS positions, and they have some noise. So one simple idea <coughs> is I could get what you could call a raw estimate. So on every subcarrier where I actually have a DMRS, I could just take the receive value here and just divide it by X of N, and then that gives me an estimate if this noise is small for H of N. And I'm going to call this um, raw estimate H hat naught. All right, so if you look at this estimate, so that is what these little red squares are. You see it basically does track the real channel, but of course there's noise in there because of this um, noise. So it's pretty noisy, but uh, you get, you already have some estimate right now. Let's look at the amount of noise, and that's pretty easy to calculate. Um, so uh, here's our channel. I've dropped the subcarrier index N, because I just want to look at one um, index here. So we have R is the... Uh, channel H times the transmit symbol X plus noise. All right, so I'm going to compute this raw estimate, which is called H at null, which is taking the received symbol divided by X. If I just substitute that in, I would have the true channel plus this noise term, which is the original noise scaled by X. So if I take a look at this and look at the error, the error will just be this noise term divided by X. So the variance of that noise would be the original noise divided by the signal power. All right. And if I look at the relative error, which is I divide by the original channel, right, I would just get none other than 1 over the SNR. So that kind of makes sense. The higher the SNR you have, the lower the channel estimation error. So they're inversely related in this way. All right. Um, that brings us to the following. So now we have got these raw channel estimates, but there are two problems. First of all, they can be pretty noisy, as you can see here. That's what's shown here now in the yellow color. And also, they're only available on these DMRS locations. And fundamentally, I want to interpolate to know the channel in other locations where I want to, say, have data that I want to use it for demodulation. So what we need to do is somehow smooth that estimate. So somehow, I want to try to create a function say like this orange function here which kind of smooths this out and removes that noise and also interpolates over all these other locations now there are many ways to do this smoothing there's linear interpolation there's spines there's also splines there's also parametric methods there's a huge literature on OFDM channel estimation but for this unit I'm going to look at a super simple algorithm called kernel regression um, which comes a little bit from uh, machine learning and there's two reasons i want to do this first of all it's really easy to implement and that's a big issue when you have a um, actual high-speed real-time design you would want something that you can implement on uh, pretty low computational overhead but second it's also very easy to analyze and it will kind of teach you all the key concepts so even if you choose to use a different algorithm if you have this in mind about some of the trade-offs involved it will uh, help you out so let's talk about what is kernel regression so kernel regression was not invented for the purpose of OFDM channel estimation it's a super old technique in uh, data analysis and it's just basically some interpolation method 
n. So in the context though of O of dm, so imagine I have some time varying signal h of n, and I get some noisy uh, version of this. And there's two things. One is that each of these uh, values have some noise, but they're also only available at some uh, symbols n. So, for example, shown here, and this is a, um, a nice paper from Payman Milan Fars group at UC Santa Cruz on uh, kernel regression for image uh, processing. So you can see that it's used in all sorts of different uh, fields. So I have this uh, true, um, I have this, I have to want to learn some kind of function like this, and I make these sort of noisy measurements shown here in the uh, circles. All right, so what you do is, for kernel regression, you have something called the kernel function. And the kernel function is usually some function which is a two-sided discrete uh, uh, function that will have some kind of weighting. And I'm going to talk about that weight uh, um, momentarily. And the most common is what's called this radial basis function. And what do you do with this weight is the following. So you say your channel estimate h hat of n, and this is at any n, not just the n on which you have the measurements, will be the division of two things. The first thing will just be a weighted combination of the raw estimates. And then this other on um, the denominator is just this scaling term here. So what does this do? Is it kind of weights all these different um, raw noisy measurements, and it weights them in a, such a way because of the, by this weighting function, which usually decays as this L grows um, larger. So it weights points that are close. Now and then this normalization kind of just makes sure that the kind of the weighting coefficients sum to one. So one way to think about it, uh, shown here. So if you take this kind of radial basis function, which looks like a um, bell curve, you kind of get one bell curve for each of these um, measurements you have, and then the final function you have is kind of a sum of these points. So it will look in the vicinity of each one of these measurements, it's kind of close to these measurements. It'll look kind of like an interpolation of the points that, of the measurements that are close by, and it will weight the points which are close by more. So that's the key idea, and it kind of gives you a very natural way to make this kind of smooth interpolation. All right, um, just as an example, let's uh, do this with a radial basis function, in this case with a bandwidth, that's the width of this kernel, right, is about seven subcarriers. so I've shown that bell curve here. Just to make this computationally feasible, I kind of truncate it about three sigma on both sides. And then if you run this estimate, here's the blue, which is the true signal, which I don't have, and I have these yellow circles, which are my noisy estimate, and then I can get this, this smooth estimate here. You still see this error, but it's much better than what you got from that raw estimate, and it's available at all the frequencies. So that's how it works, and it's pretty simple to implement. In fact, here's a very simple um, implementation in MATLAB. Again, all the code is available on GitHub, so check it out. So I just included, uh, you know, whatever, 10 line uh, function here to do the kernel regression. I compute the radial basis function of kernel. That's easy. And then I just do the um, uh, numerator and denominator just by filtering by that uh, um, uh, by that uh, kernel. All right. And then I, I just do the division down here. All right. And uh, so what you can do if you want to get the channel estimate, I created a random channel. Right, uh, just for testing this out, I uh, took the transmitted symbols, um, multiplied by a channel, added some noise. I get the raw estimate by taking the received uh, symbols uh, divided by the transmitted symbols, and then I just smooth it with this. So, you know, in 15 lines of code, you have an actual channel estimate that you're going to see works pretty well. And this is actually, this is on MATLAB, but it's also super easy to implement in any other real time platform like if this is on a host computer or on an FPGA. Okay, um, one thing that we have not talked about right now is that we've just estimated the channel of this one OFDM symbol, but I haven't talked about how to extend that over time. So think about it like this, we just have this estimate now across this time. So there's different ways to do that. Um, in this case, the only logical thing you can do if you ignore these phase tracking reference signals, they suggest to uh, take that estimate and apply it, assume it's constant over time, because we have no other information about how it varies. Of course, if you have multiple um, uh, estimates at different times, you could try to do some kind of interpolation. So I'm not going to talk about here, because I'm going to uh, let you do that in the lab. In the lab, you'll actually have two different time slots, and you'll do a kind of kernel regression over time. All right. Um, that's actually all you need right now 
to actually build that kernel uh, regression estimate, but I'm not going to have you do this right now. I want to do a little bit more analysis. I just want you to do this quick in-class exercise. Again, all the in-class exercises are on GitHub in this case. I just want you to count the amount of um, overhead by this and roughly try to see um, how many DMRS symbols are available for this particular configuration relative to the coherence bandwidth. So that'll give you a little bit of idea about how we can smooth and we'll talk about that more in the next section.